Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today I'm going to show you the Secure SQES126 Smart Screwdriver. So, those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis will have seen me using this YZH brand electric screwdriver. And when I reviewed this, I, I was really skeptical about this when I bought it. Um, but lots of people had said, oh, have you ever tried an electric screwdriver? And I tried it, and I've got to say, they're actually really handy. Um, this is not my main screwdriver. That, that title goes to my um, wearer craft form screwdrivers. Um, however, what this thing is really good at is just zapping out screws en masse. So if you've got a laptop that's got like 15 screws on the bottom panel, not uncommon. This thing is really just to just go along all of those screws and just zap them all out really quickly. No fuss, no effort. Just takes the monotony out of assembly jobs, basically. So when Secure sent me their smart screwdriver in, I was like, okay, well, let's see what a more expensive electric screwdriver looks like and what the difference is. So in the box, um, we get the actual screwdriver itself. We've got a Type-A to Type-C charge cable. This is also good for firmware updating as well. I'll talk more about firmware later on. Then at the bottom of the box, we get another box. We've got a quick start guide and some stickers down there as well. And in this box, we've got a, um, a bit set. Um, so there's a couple missing because I've taken some out to, to test, you know. So we've got a selection of bits there with um, uh, Phillips, Flathead, uh, Torx. There's also a decent number of very common security bits in there, like uh, Secure Torx, uh, Pentalobe, including P5, which is used for MacBook, um, uh, MacBook chassis screws. And then also, like, there's a Tri-Wing there for Nintendo stuff and things like that. This guy here is just a... Uh, a metal manual bit driver. Um, this is good for emergencies or if you just need a, another one with a, you know, if you just want two screwdrivers on hand, you've got this. But I wouldn't say it's particularly good. So, um, you know, this is just a backup really. So what that makes this thing a smart screwdriver? Well, it has firmware. If I just press a button just to wake it up here, as you can see, we've got this little OLED screen that shows the status of it. And what happens with this one is, on my YZH, it's just got it's got two buttons. It's got a do up and it's got an undo button. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and with this one again, we've got a two button interface. If you press the bottom button, that is function, and the top one is function with light. So if I hold that one, we get the light on the end of it that illuminates things. And this is handy if you're trying to put a hole in, a screw into a recessed hole or one that's down inside a case or something like that. Uh, genuinely useful in certain situations to see where you're threading the screw into. And if we hold down the button, then we tilt it, it automatically starts turning. Let me just stick a, a bit in there just so you can see it go. So we tilt it and it starts turning. And if we tilt it the other way, it turns the other way. Like that. So it detects the angle that you're turning the screwdriver at and rotates in that direction. So when you want to use this thing, you can just go screw into hole and start turning. And then additionally, it has torque sensing. So again, unlike the YZH that will just keep going until the screw bottoms out or you let go of the button, uh, with this one, when the screw actually bottoms out and goes tight, the screwdriver detects that and stops turning. So this is really important for dealing with smaller screws where an electric screwdriver will absolutely overpower the thread. Um, I can't use the YZH on small stuff because it will just tear up the thread or the screw head. Um, however, this one with its torque sensing won't damage stuff. So you can use it on teeny tiny little screws as well. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate to you guys now. Um, I've got a MacBook Pro next to me, uh, which needs a new keyboard fitted to it. And that keyboard is held in with a lot of very small screws. So we're going to put this thing to the test. So let's, uh, let's get that MacBook out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to redo the keyboard on this MacBook with the screwdriver, and uh, I'll let you know how I get on with it. Right, one MacBook. So we're going to start out with a load of P00 screws on the bottom, or 10 of them rather. And have I got a, I think that's a P1. Let's drop down to a P00. Yeah, there we go. And let's get to work. So as you can see now, I'm just lining the screwdriver up and then I've just got to hold the button, give it a twist, 
and out comes the screw. And I've done tests before with the YZH and found that um, I'm very quick with a manual screwdriver. I mean, anyone who, who disassembles laptops for a living will be very quick with a screwdriver. Um, and I've found that this is about the same speed as a manual one. But the difference is, is that it's effortless. To actually be this quick with a manual screwdriver, I've got to get try hard with it. Whereas with this, I'm just talking to you guys while just zapping out this screw. And so far, this guy is very smooth and very quiet. And it's definitely faster than the YZH as well. The YZH, I have not been kind to this thing. The gearbox sounds like a bag of nails and it's not particularly fast. It's fast enough, but again, it's definitely not as, as, as quick as this guy is. However, based on some testing that I've already done, I feel like the YZH has got more torque in it. I think it's better at big screws. But that's where the power of this thing comes in, is just the torque sensing for small things. So, right, now I've got to strip all the contents of this out. So let's keep going. We need to switch over to T6 in a minute, so I'm just trying to get the last of the uh, P00 screws out first. come off reasonably cleanly. I tore it a little bit at the bottom there. I've got a replacement backlight. However, just an example that these backlights are absolutely reusable if you do manage to get them off cleanly. I always buy a new one anyway though, just for good measure. Right, here is our keyboard with its million screws in. Macro shot ho. Right, let's zap out all these screws. Now for a little bit of housekeeping, I'm just going to dust out or brush out the dust and crud that's fallen out of the keyboard. I'll clean the laptop properly when we're done. However, I just want to get the worst of it out of the way. So we'll just brush, brush all of this grit out. I've done this in the wrong order. Right, new keyboard in. Just feed the power button in, in the top left. Always a little bit fiddly to do. And that's good enough. Right, now we're gonna start putting screws back in. I'm gonna set the torque level by pressing the button three times and dropping it to level four. So four is the minimum torque level on this. There's also an automatic mode where it goes more or less, where in automatic mode, it's faster or slower or more torquey or less torquey, depending on the angle that you turn the screwdriver to. However, I've experimented with this mode and I don't find it particularly helpful. So I'm, it's interesting, but not for me. I would, I would encourage you to experiment though and try the different modes and see what you prefer. Right, let's try putting a screw in. So line it up into the hole 
and I'm going to start turning. I'm going to apply a moderate amount of pressure just so I don't bounce out of the screw head and we'll see if the torque sensing automatically stops. So here we go. Mm, bit of bounce there. Maybe I wasn't pressing hard enough. Let's try another one. There we go. And it just stopped on its own. No fuss. I think I just needed a bit more pressure there. And the same. Yep, there we go. So again, the YZH, I would absolutely be jumping out of the screw head and shredding every single one of them with this. Whereas this one, it just goes in and as soon as the screw starts biting, it's stopped. It's perfect. Whoops. Fell off the screw there that time. That was my bad. Ah, come on. These tiny screws are horrifying. Normally I would be holding them more, but I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing. It's quite difficult to uh, pilot screws in uh, and not hide everything from the camera. Perfect. So my limiting factor at the moment is just how quickly I can feed the next screw into the hole. And that comes down to just my technique of picking up the next screw. However, this thing is absolutely viable for doing this. And the, as I say, my YZH, that would be shredding all of the heads of these screws. I would not trust it at all. As this is working nicely, I'm jumping a little bit now and then, but like, come on, I do, I do that with a manual screwdriver. That just happens if you're trying to rush. And I'm trying to go reasonably quickly here for the video, but these are really heckin' small screws. Now we can put on our new backlight, which has a peg here and a peg over here to line it up. Make sure that those are two seated correctly. Then I'm just going to spread out from the middle and then go around the sides and just stick that down. Doesn't have to be pinpoint precise, this. Just vaguely lined up. There we go. And I'll just put this um, bit of padding back on down here. This lines up with the RAM to uh, ensure that the RAM is pressed into the slot properly because Apple can't make decent RAM slots. Now this one's coming apart slightly, so I'm just gonna stick just a little bit of Captain tape just to keep that down. It'd be nice to remove that altogether. However, that might cause problems with the RAM later on down the line. So I'm just gonna Captain tape that in. Just take the dust out of the logic board now. Not a huge amount on here. It's fairly clean considering the age of the laptop. So just the compressed air can will do it. That's going to go there. And we'll just put in this strut brace first. Let's change back up to the P0. Right, now we're moving on to bigger screws again. I'm going to step the torque back up to the high setting, which I believe is P. It might be one, I'm not sure. P seems to work for me though, so I'll just give that a tweak. There we go. And on the higher torque setting, it just put a little bit more bite into both of those screws. And I'll put just a couple of the uh, uh, logic board screws in and then we'll put all of the cable connectors in place. All right, logic board screws in.
And we're just being a little bit careful with lining up this display connector. There we go, just make sure that goes in straight. Because if you try and force that in at a weird angle and just, just full send it, you might chip off a, an edge of the internal blade of the connector, if you see what I mean. And if you do that, you'll have a bad day. Good, that's our logic board screws in. While I've got the uh, double O on, I'll just put on this little cover here as well. I'm having to switch between the 00 Phillips and the um, and the T6 quite a lot for these, this last section. And this is the kind of time where that extra bit driver that was in the case might be very useful. I'd probably have the 00 Phillips on this screwdriver and I would put like the T6 because there's only, I don't know, eight T6 screws or something like that for the logic board on that backup bit driver. Um, just to do those bits, so I wasn't constantly having to swap screwdrivers, uh, screwdriver bits over. Time for noodly antennas. Battery in. Bang. Back cover on. There we go. Right, now we're just putting in the back cover screws. So, what do I think? Well, as I alluded to, I wouldn't do the entire laptop with just this guy. I'd run this guy, I'd run the electric screwdriver with the most common screw in the laptop. In this case, double O Phillips. And then I'd run I have a separate screwdriver to one side for the T6 screws. But if you wanted to do the entire laptop with just your electric boy, you can absolutely do that. There's lots of people out there that swear by multi-bit screwdrivers, but I still prefer having separates because I still think it's faster just to drop the screwdriver you're holding and pick up the correct one than it is to pull out the bit, get the other bit, put the bit in and so on. Um, but we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of optimizing speed and performance and stuff like that. And you can talk about that until the cows come home. However, again, I'm putting in these screws. If I was doing this with the YZH, and I did actually test this with the YZH when I got it and found I was jumping out the screw heads constantly. This guy is just zapping these, guys, zapping these screws in with no fuss. And it just stops when they're in. It's very good. I was very unconvinced by this when I first got it because, because it's not as powerful as the YZH. Like, people have seen me using this guy to pull out um, P1 screws out of compute, uh, desktop PC chassis. I've even brutalized um, self-tapping fan screws in and out with this guy. Um, so this dude is stronger than it looks. Um, and this one, however, the torque sensing doesn't let you do that. It doesn't let you do stupid stuff, which at first I found a bit aggravating and I was like, ah, I'm not convinced this guy is actually any good. But where this thing's real strength is, is the small screws because that torque sensing means it's not just tearing up these tiny little screws like the YZH would. So yeah, this guy's really good for that. Now, at this point, it's obviously very opportunistic to point out that if you go to the Secure website, they sell this exact same screwdriver with the Secure logo on it instead. So uh, this is a multi-brand thing, obviously. Someone is ma manufacturing these and you can just get your, la your own logo laser engraved on it, no problem. So if you like both of these, or if you want either or, Secure will sell you one of these ones as well. And as I say, this one is good if you're doing desktop stuff. If you, want to put, if you want to put together desktop computers, this guy's not your friend. However, if you're doing laptops and stuff, this one isn't your friend. So desktop computers, 
laptops. That's my recommendation here. Um, so other stuff that I've observed by using this thing, uh, as I mentioned in the talk settings, if we tap it three times to bring that up, we can set this to automatic. And, and now if I press the button, if I move slowly, it turns slowly. And then if I turn a lot, it goes fast. Um, so the automatic setting is pretty neat, but I actually just found that a nuisance because I, when you're actually turning it, the angle of your hand often doesn't just, it doesn't give you the, the give because you've often moved your hand around to such an angle that you're at maximum comfortable twist anyway. Like the angle that my forearm is at right now, I can't go any further without it being uncomfortable. And if I've turned to that point in order to get the head to align when I'm going onto the screw, it's not comfortable to push it to get up to high speed. It's difficult to explain this without sounding really pedantic, but as I say, when you use one of these, you'll see what I mean. So the automatic sensing didn't find that very useful personally. However, the high torque and low torque settings, that, that was useful straight away because uh, for bigger screws, you want high torque. For small screws, you want to put that right down to four so it doesn't just immediately tear out the screw. Um, and yeah, it really, it really makes a difference. Um, so the other thing that I also noticed when I was testing this is we've got the Type-C charging on the back. That's great. I love Type-C. However, the problem is I plugged this into three different power delivery 65 watt chargers and none of them would charge it. All of them just said, nope, I don't know what that is. And that tells me that this thing is not standard compliant for power delivery. And if it's not power delivery compliant, there's no point in it being type C. Now I'm not suggesting that they should have put a micro B connector on it. The micro B connector needs to die in a fire. Um, however, um, putting on a Type-C connector and then not making it power delivery compatible, oh, dropped the ball there, really dropped the ball, because that means that all of my power delivery chargers that I've got scattered around my shop won't work, and I've got to plug it into a Type-A charger instead. Well, now, I've got those lying around, but again, that's a big old bummer when you've got Type-C on it. Um, and, you know, just similar devices like my Pine Sill, which is also, also has Type-C on it. This guy's power delivery compliant, and it's a very, very similar product. It's not difficult to do power delivery compliance. I'd be very interested to know if that's something that can be fixed in firmware, because this thing has got very easy to update firmware on it. And because all of the pins on that, on that port are probably going straight into the microcontroller or the charge controller, maybe that's something that can be fixed in firmware. Be very interested to know. Um, we might find that there, at some point we see some community-made firmware for these because this is very, very similar. It's basically, it's essentially based on the Miniware ES series. Um, and again, the Miniware TS100, this got the Rallink community firmware, which drastically improved the ergonomics and functionality of the, of the TS100 soldering iron. So it would be very interesting to see if we could get the same kind of treatment for these smart screwdrivers that would give us better charging compatibility and also perhaps some extra controls. Like for example, it would be really nice to be able to switch off torque sensing uh, because if I could just switch off the torque sensing altogether, this guy's probably strong enough to do big screws as well. It's the torque sensing that, that prevents it from being able to do like Phillips number one screws and things like that. I'm sure that the motor in the gearbox is just as strong as this one, if not stronger. It certainly is a lot faster and smoother. However, the torque sensing prevents it from being able to do up the big screws because it thinks it, the screw is done up. So I'm recording this section a fair bit of time after I did the original review for this because I forgot some bits in the review. And when I came to editing, I realized that. So firstly, let's talk about the price. So the smart screwdriver comes in at about $110. It's $108.99 on the SecureMall website. And there'll be a link, to, uh, an affiliate link to that down below if you want to buy one of these things. So at that price, it's quite dear compared to the lesser one. This one, which I've been referring to is the YZH. However, you can buy this exact same one from SecureMall as well with the Secure branding on it for $30. So this guy's $30, this guy's 110 So that's a big price difference. And 
With such a big price difference, I was finding it very difficult um, to really justify the, the cost difference. Um, however, here's the thing is I've had both of these screwdrivers on my bench for probably a couple of months now. Um, this one for much longer. And when I first started using this, I was kind of like, eh, I'm probably going to use the YZH more because it's better on big screws and stuff like that. But here's the thing. Over the past month, I keep picking this one up. Um, like, I didn't, like, uh, this was a sample to me. I haven't paid for this. I'm not trying to get my money's worth out of it. But this is the one I keep picking up. Make of that what you will. I think the reason for it is, is that at full charge, this guy is really quick. I did not give it its dues, and when I was doing the review, I was working on small stuff where I was having to be slow and delicate, but like for just buzzing out screws on the bottom of a laptop, this guy is really fast. It is considerably faster than this one. I didn't really realize it at the time, but the more I've had both of them for a period of time and had more time to compare them, the more I've realized just how much faster um, the bigger boy is. Now, that makes quite a big difference to me because the point of these things is to be quicker than doing it by hand, um, as well as the accessibility aspect of it. Um, so from that perspective, um, you've kind of got a choice, really. Um, this guy is insanely good value for money, and considering Secure sell this one as well, uh, I can still recommend it as a cheap, affordable electric screwdriver. However, this one very much is the superior tool. Whether it's worth spending $110 versus $30 is kind of up to you. That's a big price difference. Um, however, this one, it is smooth, it is very quiet, and it is very fast, and it can do the small stuff. This guy is not hugely fast. It's very loud and noisy and brutal, etc., etc., uh, but it's only $30. It's kind of up to you which one you think is better, um, but like I say... Uh, every time I go to pick up one or the other of these, I keep picking this one up. So that kind of speaks for itself, in my opinion. Um, so past that, I hope that's helpful to you guys. Have a look on the Secure website. As I say, there is an affiliate link down below if you want to buy one of these. And I'll leave the choice to you. Thank you very much for watching. As always, my own support links are also down in the description below for my um, Twitter, my Patreon, my Discord, and my Instagram. Uh, or stick around for the end card, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and goodbye.